Today on Beers TV, we're going to cover bulk alkalinity additives. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beerus TV, where each week we cover a new topic related to reefing. This week we're going to discuss the two most popular alkalinity additives, a brief overview of what they're for, and the differences between the two and how to use them. Simplified to its core, corals and other organisms in our tank reduce alkalinity and we need to replace it if we want colorful, healthy, growing tanks. Replacing alkalinity can be as simple as testing now and then and dosing an additive to raise it back up. Most seasoned reefers will agree that alkalinity is the single most important element to monitor and maintain. Alkalinity serves two major roles in the tank, first of which is maintaining the pH or acidity of the tank, second is providing carbonate and bicarbonate which is the basis for how corals stay healthy and grow. In relation to a fish only aquarium, when people use the term alkalinity, they're commonly referring to the ability of the water to buffer acids and maintain the proper pH for a healthy tank between 7.8 and 8.3. Occasional addition of an alkalinity additive or even just a good water change schedule with a decent salt could be all you need to maintain your fish only tank's alkalinity and in turn the pH. If you have a reef tank which contains corals, there's a second element to the equation. Many of the living corals in the tank are pulling alkalinity out of the surrounding water in the form of carbonate to build their skeletons. Corals consuming the carbonate alkalinity has two fairly obvious effects. First, it reduces the amount of carbonate available to other corals for their growth and health, but it also reduces the overall alkalinity and eventually results in an increase of acidity of the water and reduces the pH. So how do we test for and replace the alkalinity consumed? I mentioned a few seconds ago that the corals are consuming the carbonate, which reduces the carbonate alkalinity. Alkalinity is a generalized term, but in the reef tank we're almost always referring to carbonate alkalinity because bicarbonate and carbonate make up a vast majority of the alkalinity in a typical reef tank. That means when I use an alkalinity test kit like this one from Red Sea or Salaford, I'm really testing two things. One, to make sure the alkalinity is correct so we can properly buffer and maintain the tank's pH, but I'm also testing to make sure the water contains enough carbonate to supply our corals and coralline algae for health, growth, and likely coloration. So let's pretend I just tested my alkalinity is low, which means my carbonate's also low. How do I replace the carbonate and get my alkalinity back up? One of the simplest and safest, most commonly used solutions is just to add some sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate to the tank. Once the sodium bicarbonate or sodium carbonate hits a tank, it almost instantly ionizes into separate components of sodium, carbonate, and bicarbonate. It's the last two, carbonate and bicarbonate, which replace the carbonate consumed by the corals and raises the alkalinity back up. So I have both here, sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate. Which one should I use? Well, they have some pretty distinct differences in uses. The biggest one being sodium bicarbonate will have a small temporary lowering effect on the pH. In most cases, the decrease is pretty small and only lasts a matter of hours, certainly less than a day. The sodium carbonate, commonly referred to as soda ash, has a pretty distinct elevating effect on the pH. In this case, the elevating effect is pretty large, so it really limits the amount you can add with a single dose. The most popular of the two chemicals is sodium carbonate or soda ash. I'd say it's the most popular because it's what's used to make the alkalinity component of the popular two-part calcium and alkalinity additives and what most people readily have on hand. The reasons reefers use it for daily additions in two-part, however, is the same reason you wouldn't commonly use it for larger periodic adjustments. Sodium carbonate or soda ash has that large elevating effect on the pH, but done in small daily doses, it has a small subtle effect on the pH most people find desirable. If you're interested in the two-part specifically, I'd check out one of our other helpful videos that focus solely on the two-part system. For instance, a small daily dose could easily take my average pH from 7.9 to 8.1 or 2, which would be desirable. However, a large dose where someone wants to correct their alkalinity's DKH a full point or two, the pH would skyrocket and the soda ash would be a poor choice for this. Sodium bicarbonate would be a much better choice for larger infrequent changes where a small temporary decrease in the pH is preferable to a temporary but large increase. Common examples of a larger infrequent change would be the initial correction most reefers need to make before starting a major calcium and alkalinity replacement method like two-part, a calcium reactor, or a calcwasser. Before starting something like this, it's pretty common for alkalinity to be fairly low and need a significant dose or a few significant doses to get it back up before implementing your new system. 
Well, calcium reactors, calc water, and sodium carbonate are all great methods of maintaining alkalinity on a daily basis by adding small amounts throughout the day. It can be difficult to use any of these solutions to make large adjustments because they'll all have an undesirable impact on the pH or mess with other chemistry like calcium, which might already be on target. So sodium bicarbonate is our best choice for more significant adjustments to alkalinity. So how do we actually use either one of these products to elevate your alkalinity? The most confusing part of this is most products tell you to use some arbitrary amount like a teaspoon per 100 gallons every other Tuesday, which has no relevance on your actual tank or what your levels are. What you're going to do is something much more relevant to your tank, which is use an inexpensive test kit and our reef calculator to tell you exactly how much to use. Bit of advice on the kits, the Sallyford is trusted by reefers basically everywhere and low cost. The Red Sea costs a bit more but comes with some high quality components and the reagent refills make it about the same long term. If you hate test kits like digital readouts, want a reading almost instantly and don't mind spending a few extra bucks, this Hannah Checker is what you're looking for. So let's say we tested and our alkalinity has a DKH of 7 and you want 8. Find the calculator on the site and hit alkalinity calculator. Now enter your total system water volume, which is your tank plus sump minus rock and sand. So a 100 gallon tank might really have only 80 gallons of water once you take out the rock and sand. A 20 gallon sump might only have 10 gallons of actual water, so we'd enter a total of 90 gallons. So don't get hung up on getting this perfect. A good guess is likely to get you within 10%, which is probably within the margin of error of the test kit anyways. Now enter your desired alkalinity, which in this case is 8, and our current alkalinity, which is 7. Then make sure to select the correct alkalinity unit of measurement. In this case, I'm using DKH. Now select what you're going to raise the alkalinity with. We already covered the difference between the sodium bicarbonate and carbonate, but there are four options here. The additional two options just account for the fact that some reefers like dosing dry chemicals and some like dosing a pre-mixed solution. Both are right, but maintaining alkalinity is such an important ongoing component of maintaining a reef tank, I think everyone should have a pre-mixed gallon of solution around. I'm going to use sodium bicarbonate solution, which is one cup and two tablespoons of sodium bicarbonate with purified water to make one gallon of solution. I selected sodium bicarbonate alkalinity solution. Hit enter and it tells me to dose 128 milliliters of solution. And display some tips on how to dose, which is primarily slowly to a high flow area of the tank. I like to pour it directly into the path of a high flow power head. If you selected one of the sodium carbonate or soda ash options, pouring it in slowly into a very high flow location is particularly important. You'll notice a white cloud when it enters the tank because of the solution's high pH, but the cloud should dissipate in a minute or two, if not quicker. Once you've added the dose, wait 10 minutes and test. You should be able to see the effects of the alkalinity additive almost immediately. One last note for those of you that want to take this to the next level and get a bit more advanced, you absolutely can make a custom alkalinity solution that has very little effect on the pH by mixing the sodium carbonate and bicarbonate together. Most common recipe for this would be one cup sodium bicarbonate and two tablespoons sodium carbonate with purified water to make a gallon of solution. Because the solution is predominantly sodium bicarbonate, you can select sodium bicarbonate solution on the calculator and it'll be accurate enough for most people's needs. We'll see you next Friday with our next episode of BRS TV. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. If you can't wait, check out one of these oldies like how to clean your pumps properly, a spotlight on the two-part doser, or even selecting the right sediment filter. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV.